Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this mouse. This is a 15mm scale snap kit by Zvezda that I built a while ago. If you want to see the build video there's a link in the description below, and in the card in the upper right corner of the video. Go and check it out, I'll wait here. Just kidding, I'm not waiting, let's get to the painting. I primed the model with black Steinal Res Primer, and then it's time for some colour. I begin with a coat of Italeri Dunkelgelb. I decided to use the German army set by Italeri that I've had for a while, and I do rather like the Dunkelgelb colour in this box. It is a little bit thick though so it needs to be thinned for airbrushing, but once you do that it goes on nice enough. It's a good idea to do this in multiple thin coats rather than a single heavy detail obscuring coat. It does take a bit more time, but it is worth it. It took me three coats of this to get a good solid coverage. Because as you probably saw at the beginning, there are going to be other colours. So I decided to add some highlighting to the Dunkel Gelb now, because it's easier to do highlighting at this point than later after the other colours have been applied and the masking removed. I then sprayed a mix of roughly three parts Dunkel Gelb to one part model colour buff. I apply this mostly to the top of the model, but I also gently apply some to the tops of the sides. It's pretty subtle, which is how I like it. I follow this with a mix of roughly 50-50 Dunkel Gelb and Buff, which I dry brush onto the model, mostly along the edges and raised details like the hatches. This is pretty simple, but it does a good job of bringing out some of the details. When that had dried, I used some Tamiya masking tape that I'd cut to different widths, and applied a mask over any areas I wanted to keep Dunkel Gelb. This was inspired by paint schemes I'd seen on the internet, though it's not really an attempt at replicating anything in particular. I sprayed the olive groon from the Italeri box, which is a lot more bright than I really wanted, and I'd actually forgotten just how green it is. But it's not too bad and it'll look different after washes and weathering and such, so this is fine. Once I had a good solid covering, again I applied highlighting in the same way as I did before. Except not with Dunkel Gelb, that might not work so well. I airbrushed a mix of roughly three parts olive groon to one part buff. Then with my dry brush, I applied a mix of half olive groon and half model colour pastel green. Initially I wasn't sure this was going to look right, but I think it turned out well enough and made a pretty good representation of a faded version of the olive groon. Another layer of masking tape where I wanted to keep the green, and then it's time to apply the Italeri Choco Brown, which is a very nice chocolatey brown. That is what it's meant to be, I'm pretty sure that's a literal translation of chocolate brown. Then for something different, by which I mean barely different at all, I made a mix of three parts Choco Brown and one part Buff, and I airbrush it gently onto the upper surfaces of the model. This is followed by a dry brushing with a roughly 50-50 mix of the same two colours. So there isn't really anything tricky about applying these three base colours, it just takes a while to get them all on because of all that masking. That said, it would probably take longer if we were to try and apply the highlights after removing the masking, which is what I did next. Remove the masking, that is, not try to apply more highlights. It's quite satisfying to remove the tape. It's a bit like Christmas, except the gift is something you've bought and already worked on yourself, so I guess it's not really like Christmas at all. For the most part, the masking was pretty good. There are a couple of rough spots and some areas where corrections will need to be made, but that's okay. Even with corrections I think this is a better result than I would have got by trying to hand paint this. As you can see, I've tried to arrange things so that the turret matches the hull. I didn't film any of the touch-ups so let's just move on to the next step. I applied a coat of army paint a light tone, which was thinned roughly two parts wash to one part water. I apply this all over the model. The idea is to give a sort of dirty and slightly inconsistent look to the base colours. I'm not really going for a heavily weathered look here, and I feel like this is about the right amount of dirtiness. It should also help bring out the panel lines and things like that. I then applied some gloss varnish to the sides of the turret, and then a Balkenkreuz, which I didn't film, but clearly it's there in all of the later shots, so I must have done it. It's now time for chipping. Mmm, chips. No, chipping. Aww. I decided to try a different colour here, so I used chipping from Ammo by MIG. That's the name, chipping, so it makes sense to use it for this application. I use my usual sponge method of applying chipping here, and it works well. 
I was trying to go quite lightly with this, and for once, I don't think I went over the top. I mostly focus this on the edges of the armour because that seems like a likely place for chips to appear first. I'm trying to go for a not too dirty or used look here. This colour is a bit more brown than the mix I usually make for chipping, and because of that it's not so effective on the brown paint, but that's fine by me. It is still there, it's just fairly subtle. I like this colour and I think I'll use it again in the future, just probably not over brown. Tracks are next, and again I'm trying a different colour. This time, rust tracks from ammo. I apply this to the tracks, which seems obvious, because it is. I use a large brush for the large areas and then a smaller one to get in and around the road wheels. Obviously I don't want to paint the road wheels with this colour. The wheels look okay, but I don't really think the rims should be the same colour as the rest of the wheels. Maybe I'm wrong, but to me it seemed like it would be more interesting to paint them with Vallejo model colour gunmetal. Obviously these wheels are a bit fiddly to get to, so I use a fine brush and go slowly and carefully. It is possible to clean this up if you make a mistake of course, but it's a much better idea to not make a mistake in the first place. You save time by not having to do touch-ups and corrections. The result is pretty good in my opinion, though maybe a little bit too bright. I darken it down a little bit with Army Painter Darktone, which was thinned roughly 50-50 with water. I apply this only to the tracks and running gear, and I did so fairly heavily. I seal in all the acrylic paint here with Minotaur Satin Varnish, because now it's time for the enamels. I didn't feel a need to add too much, but I did want to try the MIG Productions track wash, which I've never used before. I unsurprisingly am applying this to the tracks. It's a bit darker than the other track wash I'd been using, but I think it works pretty well over the rusty brown colour I'd based the tracks in. Maybe the dark tone step was a bit redundant though. Oh well. Next, I decided to apply some MIG Black Knight panel wash, pretty much all over the model, though I am focusing it in the vents and gaps and around hatches and things like that. This is not black as the name might suggest, and I think a black wash would have been a bit too stark. This seems to work fairly well. It is quite thin right out of the bottle, which works quite well for putting this into gaps using capillary action. Though it does also mean that you might need to do a couple of applications in some spots if you want it to be a bit darker. You might notice that the video looks different in this segment, and that's because I was a foolish idiot and left the camera in auto mode. The video still gives you an idea of what I'm doing though. I didn't film myself using a clean brush with clean thinner to remove the wash from the areas I didn't want it, but that is a pretty simple process. I applied another coat of satin varnish, and then sat around pondering if I wanted to do anything further. I decided no, but yes. I want fuel stains, but they look better if they've got some shine to them, so they can go after the matte varnish, for which I used Ultra Matte Lucky Varnish by Ammo. I wonder what makes it so lucky. When the matte varnish had dried, I applied some MIG Productions fuel stains to the fuel tank because, well, that seems like a logical place for fuel stains, doesn't it? I add just a gentle little touch of this around the fuel cap, and the capillary action draws it down the sides of the raised part of the barrel. I use a brush with very little clean thinner on it to create a sort of streaking effect, and thin it out a tiny bit. It's a simple little finishing touch which is kind of subtle, but that's good. Subtle is what I prefer. And because, as I said, that's a finishing touch, the Zvezda 15mm scale mouse is now painted and ready to do mouse things on the gaming table. I'm pretty happy with the result I've got here. I was going for a what if in use mouse that is still perhaps fairly new with not too much damage, and I think I've managed that. It is dirty and a little bit chipped, but I think it's not overly so. I do like the way the colours have turned out, and the green is a bit more appealing to me after it's been toned down with wash. I'm sure somebody's going to be all, But Herbert, those colours are wrong and I know because I was there! <laughs> Just smile and nod. I'm not going to, but if I were to go back and make any changes, it would be the size of the stripes. I think maybe the brown sections could be a touch smaller, though really it looks fine to me as it is. As I mentioned earlier, I based this camo scheme off some that I saw online, mostly on models or in illustrations, so I don't know if anything like this was used on any actual tanks, and it certainly wasn't on the mouse to my knowledge, but that's not really a problem. 
I thought it would be fun and wanted to try it out. And who's going to stop me? I rather enjoyed painting this model, even though it did take me a long time between various steps to get it done. I also used a bunch of paints I'd never used before, like the Ammo by MIG Acrylics and the MIG Enamels. I'm pretty happy with how they worked, though it's not like they're complete unknowns, and I was pretty confident that they would be good. I think maybe next time, the tracks don't really need that dark tone wash, and they have turned out pretty dark here, though that's not really a problem in my opinion. I think it looks good. Anyway, I don't think I've got much else to say about this. I think it's pretty cool, and I like the mouse quite a lot, even though its slab sidedness doesn't really offer a ton of details and things to pick out with paint. It is still an interesting beast. It has been a while since I made a painting video, I'm well aware of that, and I've got a couple of ideas for some less than sensible things that I'm going to be working on now, so look forward to those. I might also try something a bit more sensible, but who knows. If you do want to see more painting videos, it would be great if you were to share this video around with your friends or anybody you think might get something out of it. That would be very good. If you're curious or would like to follow this example, there's a list of paints I used in the description below. Though, as always, I certainly recommend you choose colours that you like rather than just using whatever somebody's put on a list. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch when I'm live. Links to all of my things are in the description below. And, as always, I shall return soon. So, until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.